Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be showing you how to add autosave functionality to your HTML forms using JavaScript, all right? So this right here is really easy to do and it doesn't require any sort of libraries or frameworks, all right? So I've got this edit profile form right here. I'm not gonna be going into how to create this form in today's video. I'm gonna assume you guys already have an existing form and you wish to add autosave functionality to it. All right, so this right here is my form. Now, I've got this message on the bottom right corner which says all changes saved, all right? So if I was to make a change to my username right here, pay attention to the bottom right corner, just like that, and we can see it now says saving. Now, while it just saved uh, my form or while the message said saving, it sent a request to the server side, as we can see right here, to the save profile uh, endpoint or URL, and we can see it sent through the username, which is of course the form field name and the new value for the username field, all right? So this right here, like I mentioned earlier, is really easy to do. Now, a quick thing to mention is that unfortunately, I'm not gonna be uh, going over the server side for this uh, autosave functionality. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is I don't know which language you're using. You could be using PHP, Java, Python, Node.js. I have no idea. And the second reason is because uh, in a similar fashion, I don't know how your application works. I don't know which database you're using. I don't know anything about your application. So um, unfortunately, this video is only gonna be for the front end um, and I'm gonna be showing you how to do it and I still hope you guys can enjoy this one, all right? So the source code for this is gonna be linked down below as per usual and we can begin inside this tab right here and add that autosave functionality. All right, so we're gonna be hopping into HTML right now, but the first step is gonna to be to uh, set up the message in the bottom right corner. All right, so going inside the HTML right here, as we can see, I've got this container. So this container is gonna be for the entire form. I assume you guys have a similar setup. Now we have the, of course, the input type right here of text and name, so on. Once again, I assume you guys have a similar situation. Now, let's skip right down to the bottom here, which says auto save message. So if I put something like uh, all changes saved inside here, then I press save and go back in the browser, we're gonna get this right here. So the CSS for this div right here looks something like this. We're simply uh, aligning the text to the right side and changing the color to be green, all right? So, uh, you know, you guys can go ahead and you can create your own style of your auto save message you may wish to use the exact same setup and have it in the bottom right corner, but I'm gonna leave that up to you guys, all right? Now, the important thing here is gonna be a second class which says autosave message dash dash saving. So this class here is gonna be a modifier class and it's gonna be added to the div uh, whenever the JavaScript is saving your uh, form field to the server side. So make sure you include a new class right here, very straightforward, and simply change the color if you wish to from a green to a dark gray or light gray. And like I just mentioned, the JavaScript is gonna be adding this class and of course updating the message when it needs to, right? So keep that in mind. But by default, we are going to remove the message inside here and we're gonna be adding it using JavaScript instead. So make sure your div right there is gonna be clear of any text. All right, so let's move on now to the actual autosave functionality. If I go up to my input field right up here, so this is the username input field, we can see we have this attribute data autosave URL. So you guys will need to add this data attribute to your input field. Um, it's simply just data dash autosave dash URL. And this right here is a simple HTML data attribute, which is going to uh, basically instruct the JavaScript which endpoint or which URL to call in order to save uh, that form field. All right. So in my case here, I have a Node.js server running on this URL and it's going to simply print out uh, whatever I pass to it. So I wanna show you this right now. If I go back to the example from earlier and I then uh, bring up the terminal here, we can see right inside here, I've got a couple of requests. So 
Um, I might just make a new one right now so you guys can see. Um, so if I say something like this and I'll just say bottle inside the username field and go away, go back to the server side uh, console application, we get username and bottle right there. So the server is gonna be receiving uh, that form data, all right? Cool, that's working fine. Now, one thing to quickly mention is that uh, your save URL or your endpoint is gonna need to be able to take whatever data gets sent through and then save it. So, um, you know, traditionally you might wanna use, or traditionally you might be using a regular form post when the page refreshes, and that might handle all the data at once, but this one here needs to be able to handle a simple one, uh, you know, one, data point updates. So one request for the username, sends it again for the uh, text area or the biography, whatever you're doing. So just keep that in mind. Cool. So going back inside the HTML, uh, once you guys have included your data attribute right here, it's going to be up to the JavaScript to then loop through the page, figure out which input fields need to be auto saved. So any, uh, any fields with this attribute right here, and then simply make that request when the value changes, all right? So going inside the linked up JavaScript file of this web page, we can simply say this. We're gonna say document.addEvent listener and listen for the DOM content loaded event. So basically, once the document has been loaded by JavaScript, we are now safe to start using query selector. But first, I wanna define two constants for our saving messages. So we'll say const saving message is gonna be equal to saving and then dot, dot, dot. Then a new constant called saved message equal to all changes saved. So you can think of this function here as your little container for everything related to the autosave functionality. Cool, so we have these two constants, we can now start using them, okay? So we're gonna simply loop through every single uh, autosave message you have on the page and then update with the all changes saved message. So we'll say document.querySelectorAll all, and we're gonna be selecting, like I just mentioned, every class, uh, sorry, every element with a class of auto save dash message, and then just say dot for each for every single one of those. We're going to grab onto the element, then just say element.inner, uh, sorry, uh, text content is equal to uh, the saved message. So now if I save this, go back in the browser, we have now uh, right here, the all changes saved message. Perfect, all right? So that's just giving us that default value to be displayed to the user. So the next step here is gonna be to loop through every single input field which has auto save functionality and of course make that work. Now, I do wanna go back inside the HTML real quickly and just add the exact same data attribute to my second text area here. That way uh, we can see how it's gonna work on multiple fields and not just one. So adding that data attribute right there for the text area and going back in the JavaScript. Cool. So we'll say document.querySelectorAll. Then inside here, we're gonna be using the CSS attribute selector. That's gonna be using double square brackets like this. And we're gonna say data-autosave-url. So selecting every single element with this data attribute. We can now say for every single one of those, we're going to simply test out and make sure we grab onto the actual input field. So we can just say input field like this, then just say console.log input field. So now I wanna save this, go back in the browser and just test that we actually have both those fields and we do right here, the input and the text area, perfect, all right? So uh, for every single one of those input fields, uh, we can now uh, get a few things prepared. So the first thing is gonna be to grab onto, um, actually, you know what guys, my mistake, let's just, uh, let's just hold on for a second. We need to uh, add an event listener for the change event. So whenever the user changes um, the value of your input field, we're gonna run this function. So we're gonna say here, input field dot add event listener, then say on change. We're gonna run this function right here. So now uh, this is where it gets interesting. So we can start preparing our data so it can be sent off to the web server or the, you know, your, your backend or your API, whatever it is. So we're gonna say const name is gonna be equal to input field dot get attribute. We're gonna be getting the name attribute from the input field. 
All right, we can then say const value equal to input field dot value. I'm now going to say console.log name and value to test out this functionality. Save this back in the browser. I'll make a change to my username input field and we get username decode seven. So we're going to be sending this to the server side. Same thing for the biography. I can say, um, let's just put decode at the end of it. Go away. We get biography as my name, which of course is set on the text area right here. And we get, of course, the value. So that's working perfectly fine. We can move on. Cool. So now we have our name and value. We can get a few more things. We're now going to be getting the URL. So we'll say const URL equal to input field dot data set dot uh, oops dot auto save URL. So simply using our, our camel case here, it's going to automatically uh, convert this. Uh, what's this called? Dash case? Snake case. I've gone... I've gone blank, but it's called something. My apologies. It's going to convert this here into our camel case. Cool. We can now say const uh, auto save message uh, element. So this one right here is going to be the auto save message to update. Remember, you guys might have multiple forms on a single page. You might have multiple containers, multiple forms, you know what I mean? So um, you're going to have multiple autosave messages. So we're going to be grabbing the correct autosave message for this particular input field or text area. So we're going to say here, input field dot closest, then say dot container. So this here is simply going from your input field. Okay, it's going to go up. So the closest method is going to go up to the class of container, which you pass in here. Then we're going to say, let's go from the parent into the autosave message. So we're going to say here dot query selector, then just say class of autosave dash message just like that. So now we can update the data or the text of that input, sorry, of that div, um, you know, as we, uh, you know, make the request. Now, a, th a fifth constant here is going to be called form data equals a new instance of form data. So this right here is going to be an object which we're going to be assigning data to to send to the server side. All right. So speaking of sending to the server side, we can now uh, essentially populate our form data. So we're going to say here form data dot append. We're going to be adding here our name and value. So now we're packaging up and saying, look, we're going to send through a name or our key of whatever this is and the value of whatever the value is. So that's just preparing our data. Now we're also going to be updating uh, that uh, auto save message element. So we'll say here auto save message element dot class list dot add. We're going to be adding that class. So that class right up here auto save message dash dash saving. We're going to be adding this right now to give us that gray uh, text color. Okay. Also say auto save message dot uh, text content is going to be equal to the saved message constant from right up here, which of course is equal to saving. I can save this, go back in the browser. I'm going to make a change to my username here, get out of it. And we get that right there. So unfortunately our text content did not work. So let's try and figure out why. So going back inside here, um, equals save message. Of course, let's make it the saving message and we're going to try again so I can just make my change here and we get saving right there. Perfect. All right. So let's make that request. Now, in order to make the request, we're going to be using our async function. So up here inside the event listener, we're just going to say async just like this. And now we're going to be able to use the await keyword and, you know, wait for the response to come back. So we'll say here const response equal to await. Then we're going to say make a new fetch request. The URL is of course going to be the URL, which of course comes from our autosave URL uh, data attribute. Then we're going to pass through some options. So we're going to say the request method is going to be post. Now you guys may want to use put or patch. Uh, but most likely you're going to be using post. So I'll let you change this as you wish. Now, a second uh, property here is going to be called body. And this here is going to uh, be provided with the form data right here. So when you assign the body property of your fetch to be a instance of form data, um, it's going to 
uh, use the multi-part form data content type when it's sent through your data. So uh, make sure your server side can handle multi-part slash form data. Um, otherwise, you can also use URL search params and that should give you the uh, URL encoded. So it's going to be up to you guys here, uh, but most likely scenario is going to be form data. Cool. So now I can save this, go back in the browser. I can make that change, get out of it, and go in the network tab. We can see here a request was sent by this form to save the profile, just like that. In the payload, we get username decode seven. Let's change my biography here, get out of it, and we get the exact same thing. This time it says biography, and it's got all that there. So as we can see, this uh, sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier, where your, your backend or your server side must be able to support uh, single property updates, okay? We don't get the whole form here, we just get the single property and that's probably more efficient anyway, okay? Cool, so now we have this right here, we can simply finish it up by updating the message. So back inside here, we're just gonna say auto save message dot class list. I'll copy and paste this here and change this add to instead now be a remove to remove that saving class and that gray text color. Once again, copy and paste this to now be text content equal to saved message. Save this, go back in the browser and update this. We get that there, update this, and we get that there. Now, a few things to consider here is gonna be, uh, essentially, you're gonna have this problem where, you know, you got your, your message here, and if I do this, then I go back and do this, we might get a problem. Now, I didn't get it there, but depending on the response times of your server, you might get a problem here. So I'll definitely test that depending on your own situation. Um, a second thing to consider here is gonna be um, when you get an error back from your server. So you may wanna check the response time here, oh, sorry, the response, uh, the response status. So you might say something like if the response.status is equal to something like 400 or a 40, you know, 401, whatever it might be, you may want to display an error message or you may want to disable the form or, you know, display a red border. It's going to be up to you guys here, but uh, this right here is, you know, a really, a really basic way to implement the autosave functionality on your HTML forms. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something. If you did, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.